Hey, hi, Glenn here, workshop at the gardens, and I have this beautiful, beautiful spalted silver maple log all stacked and stickered, and it's absolutely stunning, just with the amount of spalting in it. But what I wanted to show you in this video is what it takes to get a log to this stage. Nobody wishes a natural disaster on anyone, but in the fall of 2018, a series of tornadoes ripped through the Northfield area and a lot of damage was done and a lot of trees came down. This log happened to be one of them, very large silver maple. It was a little too large for the homeowner to handle, so uh, via their contractor, they got a hold of me and said, do you want the log? And of course I said yes. And this was also at a time where it might have been a little too big for me to handle almost because it ended up uh, being more than the skid loader could handle. So obviously, what do you do? You, you cut it in half and no, not the easy way, the long way so you can slab it up at some point. This is over four years ago. And uh, at the time, the largest piece of equipment that I had was a 36 inch chainsaw. Got a little bigger one now. But I didn't even have the mill in the log yard yet, but the seed for um, collecting logs and salvaging logs was well on its way to being an addiction. So there it is, headed to the log yard, the big maple. Now one of the first obvious questions is what is spalting? Now, for my limited knowledge, it is part of the decaying process where fungus get into the wood and as it's decaying leaves little black lines in the wood. If you know more, go ahead, leave a comment down below. It doesn't happen overnight. So the fact that this log sat in the log yard for over four years, look at the color, how it's changed a little bit. Um, that's, that's when the spalting starts to happen. Smaller logs don't take as much and you always run the risk if, if it sits too long, wood rot. And soft rotted wood does not make good lumber. Okay, so what I ended up doing, obviously I'd mentioned before that I hadn't had the sawmill in there. And when I brought it back, I thought I was gonna make these big huge slabs out of it for tables, but decided to go a different route. But what I needed to do, obviously, cause I had the sawmill now, but what I needed to do, I wanted to get a flat piece on it so I could put it, stand it up on its edge like, like that and um, mill it in that direction. And doing this at night and thinking I was going to set this big log up on the sawmill in the dark, Ron had asked a couple videos ago, hey, are you going to put lights in your sawmill so you can mill all day long and all night long? And the answer is yes, they're just not there yet. But anyways, after kind of jockeying a few times and if you know anything about winter, and wood and ice and metal and snow, things just like to slide and go all over the place. So it was uh, time to call it a day. Unhooked the forks, grabbed the bucket, because I always like to leave something on the front of the skid in the middle of the winter and parked it. And we're gonna take it on another day. Well, that another day happened to be the next morning because once you start the excitement of milling a log, you just want to finish it. Anyways, happened to be a day that Ben was uh, out at the gardens with me working on the lath house, a whole nother story in itself. Um, but there it is, ready to get onto the sawmill and a lot, lot easier in the daylight. But still had some, you know, as it's slipping and sliding around, it is uh, not that easy. Four years in the log yard, lost a little bit of weight, but it's still a 3,000 pound log. So if that were to fall off, on the sawmill like that, probably not the best, and trying to get it to stand up on its edge is a little bit of a challenge, but um, that's what's fun about skid loader work, is you find a way to do it, flip it, get it, and here we go. And then I started thinking about it, I wanted to back up the head of the sawmill, um, so fired it up and pushed it back just a little bit, I shouldn't say push it back, ran it back a little bit, still a little bit of a flaw that I gotta figure out, in the power feed is every now and then when you hit the reverse it kills the whole electric motor um, wood miser is helping me figure that out and i think we have a fix for it but every now and then it's still a pain all right time to put that log on the sawmill uh it's a four bed on the sawmill so 27 feet so this log's gonna fit in there nice and easy probably only 12 feet long but you can see how easy that 
that log moves and it was nice to have Ben around and just see how strong Ben is because he just pushes that 3,000 pound log with no effort at all thanks to ice, snow, and metal on all of that. But you can see, you know, just the, the gentleness that it needs to take to set one of these logs on there too much and it rolls over and takes out your sawmill. So always a little bit... Um, a little bit of fun putting these on there. Don't have a better word that I can say publicly. But once we're on there, um, sliding it over into place, getting it all set up, and there we are. And now Ben and I have to go do our day job. So we'll come back to this and mill it another day. Well, milling day is here. I wanted to pop over and take a look at that little piece that I cut off on the edge and was like, oh, wow. This is going to be gorgeous, but um, it's not as easy as just, you know, start milling because it's only, it's an LT wide, wood miser LT wide sawmill. That means I can do 35 and a half inches, and if you're like Vinny, he tricks his out and he can get a whole 36 on inch his sawmill. Either way, needed to trim that little branch off and doing it rather gingerly because if the log decided to roll off and I didn't know exactly how much was uh, of it was hanging on there and I didn't want to run the chainsaw into the metal brace underneath. So nice and easy, but that came off nice and good. Clean it off a little bit, the chance of a rock in the snow and just sitting in the log yard and being moved around a couple of times. But here we are, easily four years, two months to the date when it came into the log yard and I'm about ready to make my first cut. Isn't that pretty? <laughs> and this is just taking it off on the first little top piece, but yeah, that's, that's the excitement, and that's how fast that uh, sawmill head goes. Remembering it is winter, so the log is frozen, so it takes a little bit more to go through here, and thank goodness that we speed things up. Um, for videos because this would take uh, about four hours to watch me mill this whole log <laughs> and I don't even want to watch that so I can't imagine you wanting to watch that but it starts to you know once you start seeing what you have and thinking about what you want to cut and what it might get used for um, that spalting on the outside edge just it is beautiful and I wanted that and more for lumber so I just started doing four quarter cuts off of that getting down into a little bit I know you Sawyers out there know exactly what I mean by four quarter. Those that are watching, um, just because saw milling is cool and making lumber is cool and you don't know the whole quarter system, um, there's four quarters in an inch. So instead of calling it an inch and a half or two inches, we call it six quarter or eight quarter. So a four quarter cut is just simply a one inch piece of lumber coming off of that. And it was just um, beautiful. And you don't have to stop uh, and take the piece of lumber off every single cut. But I find myself doing that just because it's so beautiful. I want to see what's there. Uh, it's part of that addiction that I talk about when you start milling wood and just seeing what's there and how pretty it is. Uh, I use those little taping to scrape the sawdust off, even though the saw blades... Oh, there you go. Look at that. Wow. It's just stunning. All right, keep cutting. Um, so here it might be an example of where I do a couple. No, I don't do a couple passes. We just take them off each individual time and see how pretty it is. But more of that four quarter coming off, and you just start stacking it up off to the side there. That's a whole nother little piece of this drawing that we're going to talk a little bit but now that I'm, I'm down into it there's some really nice pieces here these are coming off and I'm cutting them at eight quarters so now I'm up to two inch pieces and here's an example of where I'm actually cutting um, three of them so dropping it down six inches and starting in so there will be three boards here um, but another little piece of this whole thing working by yourself uh, these boards start to get heavy, and you start to move them around a little bit, but um, so worth it. Um, we'll get through this one, and you can kind of see how it uh, how you start out. Yep, time to speed it up, because um, there's still a lot of log to get through there. And it was a 
beautiful, beautiful day. Not too cold. I think it was in the teens when we were milling here and haven't got any further on the sawmill shed, but really like how the sawmill shed is setting up. But time to move a few of these slabs out of the way. Um, you learn leverage real quick and just kind of cleaning them and throwing them and seeing what's there. Um, yeah, breaking those out. That's probably 250, 300 pounds. There's that one by itself. So I don't lift the whole thing up. You just kind of pivot them around and set them. But time to take a little look. Because I cut this in the field, it had somewhat of a straight edge. So it was kind of fun that these could be uh, book matched. And you can start to see that book matching is when one cut is opened up. So you see both sides uh, of the cut and the wood grain and what's inside of them mirrors and so you just have to clean it up and admire that for a bit and you start to see what's inside and it's just stunning these uh eight quarters are going to make some beautiful beautiful tables um, that's all there is to it just a beautiful grain in there and the way that the branching and multiple branching showed up in there and then of course let's throw that spalting in there it's just stunning how these uh slabs um, just turned out absolutely stunning all right enough admiring time to get back to work and do a little bit more cutting um, but first I'm gonna move that stack out of the way and flip that log over and start in at it from the other direction all right with that log flipped over I'll take a quick measurement I'm gonna pull a handful of four quarter inch boards off and they turned out to be even more amazing than the other side absolutely beautiful when you uh, see them cleaned off and I just had to do another little book match and butterfly um, these two together just look at that absolutely breathtaking um, so those sets are just absolutely amazing we'll leave it at that all right what I'm not going to show in this video is getting this all stacked up on a slab skid I'm going to put a video up in the card and to some slab skid video about the ash log that I put on there that's how this got all stacked up so um, stickers stacked onto the slab skid then we move that out to air dry air drying is going to be six months it needs to be uh, above freezing water won't move out of wood when it's frozen so that's why I say six months because that's kind of summer and then it'll hit a kiln so we still have another two well, at least 18 months before this lumber is going to be ready to use so now we're pushing five and a half years since this tree was salvaged um, there's a lot of different ways to do that isn't that just absolutely beautiful um, yeah, there's the slab skid stacked up. Hey, thanks for following along on the journey of this beautiful spalted silver maple. It is going to dry here for a while, probably a year. Needs six months at least, but it'll probably hang out here for a year before a kiln opens up and before I get it there. But just a fun, beautiful story of salvaging a log. Uh, it's, bringing it to life and can't wait to share with you the next part of the journey, drying it out and then making something with it. Thanks for following along. Glenn here, workshop at the gardens. Thanks so much. Enjoy.